I remember thinking when I was a little bit smaller That all my days would be filled with happiness and fun But then I discovered it's not that easy Some days can get you down but the rest is up to us I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy, joy. And a little bit of laughter To spin some bad luck into a real good time It doesn't matter what life brings You gotta focus on the bright side We can be thankful, we can be grateful The choice is yours and mine I won't hesitate to see something great Cause I choose, I choose joy, joy. Some Christmas lights Oh, there ain't nothing like the Christmas joy Let's go, sing it out I want some Christmas cookies I wanna see some Christmas lights Oh, there ain't nothing like the Christmas joy Merry Christmas, everybody All the lights are bright, snow on the ground I hear the jingle bells jingling all around There ain't nothing like the Christmas joy had to come sooner or later. Christmas is over. Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. But alas, the celebration has ended. The tree must come down. The leftovers must be eaten. The decorations must be packed away and put in the hall closet until next December. But don't worry. There are other holidays that you can celebrate between now and then. A lot of fun stuff. But I get it, I get it, none of it's Christmas. Of course, there's always Fruitcake Toss Day! World Beard Day! Play your ukulele day! Let's Laugh Day! <laughs> Peanut Butter Lover's Day! Dress in Blue Day! Yeah, still not Christmas. <sighs> I have to let go and stop celebrating. Or do I? In today's story, we'll hear about some wise men who traveled a long way to celebrate Jesus. And it wasn't even Christmas Day. Ooh. Maybe I should make sure these are untangled before I shove them in the box. Eh, I'll deal with it next year on National Untangle Your Lights Day! Uh, which should uh, definitely be a 
everything. See you in a few. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus was born, there was a group of wise men who lived in the Parthian Empire, far to the east of Jerusalem. Now, no one knows why these wise men were looking for a special star, but it could have happened this way. Hundreds of years before, God's people had been defeated and taken as exiles to Babylon. One of them was Daniel, and through God's help, he gained the favor of the king. You will rule over Babylon and take charge of all the other wise men. Now, Daniel held this important role for much of his life, even after Babylon became part of Persia. During this time, he shared his love for God and his knowledge of Jewish scriptures with the other wise men. The Lord is the one true God. He has told me many things that will happen. Over hundreds of years, some of the wise men in Persia continued to study Jewish scriptures, even under different rulers. Many of them may have even remembered Daniel. So when several wise men discovered a brand new star, they knew it meant something important. Look, there in the west, it's a new star rising. Now, we don't know the names of these men or really exactly how many there were, but we'll call them Melchior, Casper, and Balthazar. A new king, maybe? Oh, ooh, ooh. can we have a party? The wise men hurried to the archive room where they dug through dusty scrolls to find the writings of Jewish prophets. Ah. Here are the words of Daniel. God had given Daniel some strange visions of a savior who would come and rescue the Jewish people. The time he tells of could be right now, depending on how you read it. So, party time? And look here, in the scroll of numbers. A star will come from among the people of Jacob. A king will rise up out of Israel. The star. The timing. I think this is it. Party time! These wise men did far more than just throw a party. They planned an epic road trip to honor the new king in his own land. I'll pack up the food. I got the heart for some road tombs. Who's got the camels? Ugh, you can handle them. I got the party gifts. The wise men packed up beautiful gifts worthy of a true king. Then they set out on their long journey across the desert. Due west. Follow that star. Oh, I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Yeah, I think I'm ahead of my time. After many long weeks, the wise men neared the city of Jerusalem. Surely someone will know of this new king. The wise men entered the city, causing a stir with their fine robes and curious questions. Where is the child who's been born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and now we have come to worship him. And we got party gifts. In the palace, King Herod heard news of the foreigners, and he didn't like the sound of a new king. Outrageous. King Herod called on the chief priests and the teachers of the law. Where is this Messiah supposed to be born? Uh, please note my air quotes. In Bethlehem. Humph. Humph. How do you know? They are Prophet Micah, your majesty. He says, um, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will rule my people Israel uh, like a shepherd. Oh, well, I see. Have these wise men come see me and keep it on a down low. Soon, the wise men were ushered into the palace. When did this special star appear? At the perfect time for a party. I want you to go to Bethlehem for me. Search for this child and report back when you find him. 
Uh, then I can go and worship him too. <laughs> Please ignore the air quotes. So the wise men left the palace and immediately continued their journey, following the star for several more miles. Look, it's resting over that little town of Bethlehem and that little house in Bethlehem. Time to party! The wise men soon arrived at the little house where Jesus and his family were staying. Mary and Joseph welcomed them in, and the wise men bowed low before Jesus, who is now a toddler. We brought gifts! The wise men brought out their carefully packed treasures. Gold? Frankincense. And this is myrrh. These are gifts for a king. Precisely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. The three wise men worshiped the tiny king, God's very own son. Before they returned home, though, God spoke to them in a dream. Do not go back to Herod. Yeah, I could tell he was a bad dude. So the wise men took a different road, bypassing Jerusalem, as they returned to their own country. Some time after Jesus was born, wise men came to celebrate him. They weren't there at the manger like sometimes we think. Do you know what that means? It means it doesn't have to be Christmas Day to celebrate Jesus. The creator of the universe sent his son to the world. That may have happened on one day, but it's so big that we should be celebrating it year round. You don't have to sing Christmas carols, but you can still sing praise to Jesus. You don't need a better reason to give gifts to the people you love. And you don't need Christmas lights to remind you that Jesus is, and always will be, the light of the world. So, whatever day it is, you can always celebrate Jesus. Jesus is the reason for every season. That's the one thing to remember today. Never stop celebrating Jesus. In fact, if I get to keep celebrating, why am I putting these decorations away? Let's get these lights back out and start the party! <laughs> yeah! Oh. You know what? Let's just do music instead. Merry Christmas, everybody! 